All right, folks, what we're going to be doing to encourage the bugs into our garden, and the bugs that I'm talking about here are lizards and skinks and, and all those little things that need little hidey holes. You know when you're sometimes walking around your garden and you've got a few rocks there, like lying there, having a suntan, no factor needed, 40, 30, they dig it to lie in the sun. But we want to encourage those guys, and some of us that live in smaller gardens with walls all around us, we've got to try and recreate that. So we're going to make a bug hotel. <laughs> they awesome. What do you need? Very, very simple. I've got a pair of really tough secateurs, pieces of cane, a hammer, four pieces of wood, a bit of backing board, some screws, a few broken clay pots, and a few bits of wood. Now, how do we get started? Guys, remember, this is for the bugs. They're not going to judge you if it's a bit crooked or if it's a bit, you know, look, looking like a rhombus and not a rectangle. But ideally, what we want to create is something that looks like this. Look at that. One, two. Let's put that little piece of wood over there. And actually, that piece over there. And that piece over there. Okay. You see that? We've got a little square happening there. And all we've got to do now is drill those pieces together. Plain and simple. Let's get it done. There we have it, one little square, good to go. We've put in one of these little cup hook things so we can hang our little bug house wherever we want it, but we haven't finished yet. What I'm gonna do now is turn it over and we're gonna attach the piece of masonite just onto the back. And there we go, the back is on nice and secure. And there's our little bug hotel, which is the framework. And now we get to start putting the bits in that we can really start playing with. So put it down. And this is where your creativity and flair comes into play, folks. Um, I've got a few bits of bamboo cane here. All I want to do is get the right depth. So take a look at it there. Here we go. And you want to cut quite a few of these, all right? So go cut there. And we're going to make probably about 20 of these little guys. What I love about them is that they've got a little hole that goes all the way through so the little guys can go in there, lay their eggs in there, hide out, play hard and go seek, and they work really, really well in bug hotels. So let's cut a whole lot of these and then we're nearly ready. Okay guys, that should be enough of our little bits of bamboo. And now what we're going to get onto is some clay pots. So I've got a few clay pots that have been broken and um, a few chips off them. And what a good reason to be able to smash them up even more. So um, <laughs> take the clay pots, just give it a good whack. Ha <laughs> ha! All right, guys, we've got all our pieces now ready to start building our bug house. And you know, folks, there are no rules about this. Literally start at one end. What you do want to do is to make sure that you've got little bits, so little little hookies like that, you see, because that's where they go into. Um, and the reason why we put it in a frame is so that it stays all nice and neat and together. The other thing that you can use in here is, is irrigation piping. You can literally use bits of broken teacups, um, whatever your heart desires, bits of bark um, you can add in. And it's a great way to find things around the garden that you need a new useful, you know, and so many things that we can be using that are always lying around. So I'm going to put a layer of that in under there. Maybe I'm going to go up the centre. Yes, I think that's a good idea. Let's go up here. And yeah, you just keep packing away, finding bits that'll work and fit. And that's why it is such a cool thing to do because there are no rules. Pop them in there. And then these little sections here, I'm going to use the bits of clay pot. And once again, those, you just pop them in here. And no specific way. That's it. Nice. And then my little bits of bamboo. And... Okay guys, my last little piece of bamboo going in. Maybe I can squeeze in another few pieces of terracotta here because I want it to be really nice and tight. Let's give this a bash. Aha, perfect. 
get that baby in there. And the idea is that when we lift it up, just like that, there's a little Hilton Hotel ready for the garden. And there's lots of space in there for bugs to be very happy, en suite, full on five star, because they've got little places to hang out in for their eggs, nice and warm, keep them cozy. And guys, this you can put anywhere in the garden and invite the bugs in. I wouldn't mind staying in here if I was a bug. Folks, there are a lot of bad hawkers in the garden and some of them we do want to keep out. And the number one of those are snails, especially in our veggie garden because they just love munching at everything that's juicy and delicious. So what I've got here is copper earthing wire and you pick it up at your local builders. All you're going to do is the following. You can take it no matter how big or small your garden is. That depends on how much you're going to need. So if you've got one lettuce, okay, over exaggeration, you're literally going to take it and put it around the plant, making sure that there are no gaps underneath the soil, because then the snail will simply just climb underneath it. The reason why copper is because snails hate copper. If I had to put a snail here now, it would not cross over the copper. And that is the brilliant part about it. So if you've got a bigger veggie garden, of course you're going to need a whole lot more. Then you would simply take a few pieces of dowel or any bits of wood, roll it on there a bit, pop your next one in, and put it right at the end here, roll it round. And you can literally put that as a little electric fence all the way around the things that you don't want to get chomped. So nice and simple, take one end over there, pop it into the veggie garden. And remember, go all the way down so that it literally is just above soil level. Take the other end, you hammer that one in. So if you can see, I've got the entire piece of copper running all the way around. You can continue this around your entire veggie garden. And if Mr. Snell had to come along here, he is going to turn around in reverse and guess what? Go to your neighbor's garden. <laughs> and the other really easy way of keeping snails at bay is by using your leftover eggshells. Because can you imagine if you've got a slick underbelly to try and climb over these? So all you do is take the eggshells and create little circles around your veggies. Now, not only does it save your plants from being eaten up by the snails, but also the calcium that eventually breaks down and goes into the soil is a great addition because, of course, we always tell you to use your eggshells on your compost heap. So doing that all the way around them, look at that. We've got electric fences of eggshells. And all of this is a really cool, eco-friendly way to keep those pesky snails at bay.